Ah, uh, God, I don't even have chat open. People could have been... Oh, Beebs! It's Beebs! I didn't even have chat open yet. <laughs> I forgot to load it. What's up, Beebs? That's my man right there. So I'll tell you what. I'm getting started here in just a second. Got two more things. Oh. Oh, I've got the tweet. Got a tweet. That's the best part. Put the, the, the funny gif in the tweet. So that way people think I'm cool and edgy. And fun and Twitter did. <laughs> Whatever the hell that means. Ugh. All right. I think we're good to get started. A you know, Lego cam going. What's up, everybody? I forgot I was wearing the black shirt today. <laughs> um, yeah, today's the last day of Heavenly Realms. So we're going to see what it looks like. Completely built. We have four bags to go. I want to jump right into it. Uh, i got to angle my camera. Because, again, we don't have a perfected camera system here. Um, yeah, we're just figuring it out. I want it straight, first of all. That's pretty good, actually. And then we do our cool, like, slide the keyboard under the, into this hidden secret compartment. And here's our, oh wait, did I, oh, keyboards. Okay. Oh man, if I could only get this. Yeah, whatever. Whatever. Here it is, the, the, the station. Okay. So we're finishing Heavenly Realms tonight. We're on bag 14 out of 17. Ah, oh, damn it. Alright. It just, just popped off, so I gotta put it back on. Right, let me do this right now, though. There we go. There we go. That's bopped. It's bipped. That's bopped. That's booped. We're going to get going. Welcome to my bunk right there. I got to figure that out. I probably need to mount it higher up, flip it around, and then invert it. That's probably the best thing to do. But we'll get to that in the future. Two angles. Boo! Okay, anyway, we're having fun. We're having fun today. We got a Mario pillow. My son stayed home from school because he has a raging ear infection. So he hung out with me today while I was at work. Um, but yeah, bag 14. You know, I saw a thing last night where we could... I wonder if I could... Ah, you know what? We're not going to get it set up tonight. I'll do it for my next build. Where did I put the directions? Um, oh, here it my, my candy bag. All right, bag 14. We already looked at it last night, but we'll look at it again, just because. Just because. Is this a good angle? This is a good angle. This works. I'm sure my audio is working. It is. What's up? Steam is closed. Good, you won't get strange notification in the middle of the stream but again bag 14 we got some red we got this looks to be the, the warm-up bag we really gotta prioritize getting to bags 15 and 16 because those are the, the big boys we got a small bag here There's, oh <laughs> put the bag in front of the microphone i'm used to that being my uh 
where the old second cam used to be. We could do that again, but I don't know. I don't use it that often, if I could be completely honest. And I'd rather put it right here so you can get the zoom in, the zoom in view. All right. So we are on bag 14 here. All right, this is, so this says bag 11. So we're way further than that. Oh, we're definitely not here yet, though. This is probably the bag we're on. Actually, it does look like the bag we're on. Oops. Bag 14. This is the bag we're on. Monkey. Monkey. We'll be done with monkey soon. All will be monkey. What I like is this set's not going to get any deeper or like longer. It's just going to be higher. So I feel like I'm finally conceptualizing its size. All right. Bag 14. Here we go. Four bags tonight. We got to make quick work of this. We're making doors. That's what these red things are. Okay. We're rocking and rolling, and then we can start, um, did I do this? Oh, okay. And then we can start the friend set. The friends one will go by quick. It's significantly smaller than the monkey kid one. And it's already opened into like its second bag. So we're, we're picking up what, what was started. Already, we got golden frogs in this bag, by the way. That's a little frog. A little froggy. There's this little froggy head ribbit. <laughs> Alright. We have a little Among Us guys, though. That's what we're using. A little Among Us guy. He's a little sus. He's a little sus. There's this. A little door. The little knocker. Oh, damn. Okay. So this... <clears throat> what? How am I doing this? Okay, it wants me to be back here, but I don't see... Any way for this to attach? What? Is this? What on earth am I doing here? There's no pole. It can't attach to anything. I mean, it looks cool, but... Um, did I miss a step? Oh, I did miss a step. <laughs> Nobody say anything. Okay. We, we missed. I was like, there isn't a pole. It's literally because it's in the page prior. Surprise. All right, so this points downward. And the pole attaches to the white piece right here. And there it is. Okay, cool. The door is in. Let's do the other door. Do the doors. Come on, baby, let my fire. Was that the doors? I think it was. Or was that Jimi Hendrix? Hmm. Come on, baby, let my I think that was the doors. Light my fire? Is that the doors? Somebody smarter in old music than me needs to tell me. All right. Um. Oh boy. 
Hoboa. That's what we were missing in that first one. So now we got the hinge on the door. This big thing just being in my way. <laughs> so cumbersome. What do I do with all these Lego pieces and big sets? Oh, woe is me. I have all these awesome big Lego sets. All right, I'm going to try to lift this up. This is a terrible idea. Terrible idea. Psh, you can see the red doors in there. It's as good as I'm going to get it for now. God, it's more room, but it feels like less room, quite honestly. Okay, let me scoot this in. We do have pitch black tonight, J-Man. There it is. We're doing that again. You can see inside the can. Ooh. Delicious. All right. So we're building up here. Building up. Move that in a little so you can see it a little better. And two curvy, curvy, curvy things. My son is still awake, by the way. I'm probably going to have to go put him to bed. In a minute. Is this what I need? One of these? Yeah? They're, they're, uh, they don't look like they have the... Okay, there are. Yeah, alright. Alright, so it's not this one. It's not that one. It's the flat one. This. God, we're already making some really cool design. stuff going on here. Okay. Oh, let's get some of that. There's a lot of really nice thin pieces, so it'll make some really good some really good Lego noises. <laughs> I need that to be a channel reward. Make Lego noises. <laughs> that would probably get redeemed quite a bit. Yeah. Lego ASMR. <laughs> Just one hour of uninterrupted footage of me just sticking my hand in a Lego bin. Or a Lego, a bin full of Lego bricks, just like swirling my hands around. Now I'll have like a bin with really big pieces, so you get big clonky noises, and then a bin with the really tiny pieces, so you get that like shifty noise. We've already we've burst a new Twitch channel. I'm sure like twenty of those channels already exist. It's already been a thing. Okay, now six blue. So last night, the uh, streamer we raided um, had the PDF of the directions up and was had a, a, a browser capture of the PDF of the instructions. And I was like, damn, that is super awesome. That's probably what I'm going to do for my next builds is use the PDF of the instructions and have it as like a element make maybe one of the videos smaller move chat I don't know um, but I want that <laughs> I'm gonna do that I took one look at it and I said I love it I want it it's gonna happen god we gotta do this eight times okay we're making a roof okay so it's like this. So I'm about to do this eight times. Make eight of these. My camera was like, fuck no. I ain't watching you do that eight times. <laughs> Thanks, camera. Bought you to do one thing for me. And here you are doing it terribly. There you go. You did okay. You're back. You know, you'll focus when you're ready. And that's all that matters. Getting some good clicks. 
Some good click clonks. How many do we have? Five? Okay. We need eight. No update on the slough trip to UK, by the way. I'll probably know on Wednesday how oh, that's looking. Two, four, six, seven. And I'll have an update then. The week that it might happen on would be absolutely terrible for my wife. So that might be the differentiator right there, that whether I go or not. Because if it sucks for her, then it really isn't something that I want to do. But if the week's negotiable and I can move it around, then you know, eight. Now I gotta figure out where to go. Okay, so the build, the instructions have me turning this around and looking at it from behind. So I'm gonna do that. Ugh. I think the reason I feel claustrophobic is the the freaking camera arm being like right here. I can't I feel like my right arm is very restricted in what I can do. Um anyway, maybe these. This is this is a popular way to get diagonal pieces to make a roof. So I wouldn't be surprised if that's what this turns into. Say one, two, three, like that. Okay. Oh, I put this one on. Oh no, I did it right. Okay. 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 Um two. Yep. There's that one. And there's that one. We got two more that go in this middle section here. Looks like they just go on the ends. If I'm not mistaken, because it goes like this. And there's four. Uh, yep, all right, math. The math maths. That's always a good feeling when the math maths. These that go inside. Thought they would face outward. They do not. They face inward, which is interesting. Okay. Ah, we're making roof things. Okay. 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 I've also decided that uh, next time a robot named Fight is on sale in the Steam store, I'm going to buy it. I played it a lot on my Switch, and oddly enough, it was one of the first games I ever streamed regularly on this channel. One of the first games ever, a robot named Fight. You may be like, what a random game. You look at it and be like, this game? <laughs> you streamed that first? I had a hell of a time playing it. I loved it. It was an incredible game. It really is. And I uh, I stopped playing it. The It's a one-man developer, Matt B. And I loved streaming it. Um, it. It was just a... It was on Switch. There was a time I wanted the channel to be like, oh, I'm going to buy all these indie games on Switch and stream them on my Switch and like I'll help small indie devs by streaming their games and and you know it'll be a really cool identity for the channel but it never really like I didn't really take that idea far obviously but um I still streamed the crap out of a robot named Fight because I I loved it it was a really fun game and if I play it on PC then the progress will restart and I'll see a lot of updated stuff that I haven't uh played through yet um so i've decided if i see it on sale you're a zelda streamer yeah the the eventually the nintendo switch claims <laughs> it claims what it wants 
but it was a really it's a really good game if you're into metroidvania and roguelike it'll scratch the itch for both and i definitely want to play it again like our live alive i already have it on switch um I don't want to go through my boxes back there right now, but I do have it. I just, I, you know, the problem is I like, I like games like that. I think, and, it, and I don't go for just like any JRPG. Um, like there's, there's series that I've been trying to get into that I just can't like Legend of Heroes series. I can't get into um, the Atelier series like Ryza. I can't get into like, they're just, when, when the games are too tropey, I get like, I don't know, it's a turn off for me. Or the combat system's just like, what the fuck am I doing right now? Like, I, I don't get into that. But, <laughs> like, that the stuff that's like too, and like Sword Art Online, not my alley. Um, has to be the retro stuff um, is, is more my speed. Like, the Live Alive is obviously a remake of an SNES game. So that had my interest. Um, like Octopath Traveler is up my alley. That's a really good game. I and Octopath Traveler Two just came out, and I really want to play that. Um, but other games too, like Triangle Strategy, was was not like didn't didn't appeal to me at all. I played the technical demo, and the game was so slow, which I know people will say about like ninety percent of JRPGs, but for me. To be like, I am slogging through this demo right now, and it is zero percent enjoyable. Maybe it was Triangle Strategy, whatever that game was, the Triangle Strategy. Um, it, it just, oh my god, it killed me to get through that that demo. But I loved Octopath Traveler. I played that. I've streamed that before too. Um, and that's the sequel just came out, and I've I was talking to a friend of mine, and he said the sequel is as good as the original. And then some, and that's all I needed to hear, because <laughs> that that is a uh, that is up my alley. Chrono Trigger is probably one of the most influential. So for me, I played RPGs. I started playing RPGs on PS One. PS One is when. I really got into RPGs. I didn't play them much on my Super Nintendo. Super Nintendo, I stuck to, like, Mario, you know, Zelda, like, first-party stuff. I played, like, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Turtles in Time. You can definitely tell when that camera's <laughs> dangling. Um, I played, you know, all the popular stuff, but not a lot of role-playing games. It wasn't until PS1. My dad... This is actually a really cool story. My dad had a co-worker who took a job with the company in germany my dad was uh worked for an like a aviation company but he was in the accounting part of it he, he wasn't like a, a plane builder or an engineer like he he was a he was in the finance side of the company um but he had a, a peer who moved to what the Okay, this is just going to hang there. I, I did not. Oh, sorry. Woo! Whoopsie. This bag's turning out to be bigger than I thought it was. But yeah, those just hang there. I don't, I don't love that. Oh, wait. Do they line up with the white thing? What am I doing? Are these supposed to no? They I mean, we gonna find out sooner or later. <laughs> anyway, my dad's coworker moves to Germany one day and says, Yeah, I got this game console. Your son's into this stuff, right? And he, my dad was like, Yeah, I'll buy that off you for twenty bucks. So my dad bought this game thing off of his coworker for 20 bucks and brings it home to me. And he says, hey, son, you like this gaming stuff? Is this something you could play with? I got it for 20 bucks. It was in a, just a stop-and-shop plastic bag. 
So I open the plastic bag, and it's a PS1 with a copy of Final Fantasy VII and a DualShock controller. <laughs> I was like, what? My dad got a PlayStation for 20 bucks, And that, that was how I got my place, my first PlayStation. It was my dad, like, he didn't even haggle. He just was like, the guy was like, 20 bucks if you want it. And then my dad was like, yeah, I guess. <laughs> and my dad got a PlayStation for 20 bucks, which became, I would say, probably, you know, I already liked game, like video games and stuff, but like, that was like the moment for me. So obviously I boot up Final Fantasy VII right away. Uh, I actually couldn't because none of the TVs in our house had our, like the composite they were all RF. We, we had old ass TVs in my house. And uh, I had to wait a day to get a RF adapter. <laughs> That's how I played a majority of my PS1 games. As an RF adapter. And uh, this just fucking dangles. I don't like that. Ooh, it's scaring me. Okay. Um, and he... Uh, I got the RF adapter and I played Final Fantasy VII and... That was the, the moment where I was like, oh my gosh, this is what games are going to be like? This is this is video gaming now? This is nuts. So I had a, a fond love of my PS1 for a very long time. I played again, I played all the, the big PS1 games, you know, Crash Bandicoot, Siphon Filter, Metal Gear Solid, all the Final Fantasies, like, that, that just like, you know... I played everything <laughs> on that PS1. All the big games. Uh, Spyro. Uh, you know, like, it was, you know, you name it, I probably played it in some fashion. And uh, I loved it. Loved my PS1. But when I played Final Fantasy VII, it, like, that's when I was like, there. this is this. I had the question that probably a lot of people did at the time when I was like, how is this the seventh, seventh one? Like, where, where are the first six? And I found out, you know, g Google it, not even Googling, like America Online. I was Ask Jeeves in <laughs> or whatever, Alta Vista, whatever, like search engine, old ass search engines were out there. And I found out that a lot of them were on like Nintendo and Super Nintendo. I was like, man, how have I never heard of these games? And that's when I discovered a program called ZSNES. And now you know where this story's going. <laughs> and uh, I got my hands on, you know, all those old Final Fantasies. I was a filthy, you know, degenerate pirate playing all these old Super Nintendo games, getting my hands on PlayStation games. Like, this was, it was just an era for me to play, like, to catch up on all these role-playing games. And I would say, like, that was really the, the moment for me. Where I, uh, where I fell in love with RPGs because I was like just playing all these old games, like experiencing these j stories for the first time. P games people have already hailed as like the best, the best of the best, you know. Like, oop. I I had never seen them and I never got to experience them. So my like little middle schooler brain was just being blown on a regular basis because I was finding new sites. I was finding all the ROMs for all these old games that, like, were just, uh, they were just, they were always around, and I just never knew. I was I was in the dark about them. Um, so I, I, that's why I played all the old Final Fantasy. So you brought up Chrono Trigger, and that was one of the mainstay games that i played for the first time through emulation and i think that was the one so final fantasy 7 obviously plays a huge role be dumb not to say as you know from the story like ff7 was the 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 turning point for me but oh, look at these things these are cool he's got these like little cloud golden clouds um Chrono Trigger was probably one of the most influential games of that part of my life where I was like playing all these old RPGs. Um, and more than once that game just blew me away. I mean, it's hard to 
not appreciate what Chrono Trigger was and what it accomplished at the time and you know what it what it stood for like it, it was the the passion project of the Final Fantasy team like a guys from the Final Fantasy team like Nobuo Ematsu uh, it had the artist Akira Toriyama obviously famous for Dragon Ball if you take one look at Chrono Trigger's art and you're like yep that's the Dragon Ball guy <laughs> um, I feel like it's like Akira Toriyama in a nutshell though in like the Dragon Quest series like you know it's Akira Toriyama like without even before you even start the game but it, it, that's I didn't know that stuff like because uh, to me Final Fantasy 7 was just oh Squaresoft they make cool games I played Final Fantasy 7 but like Chrono Trigger was the game that got me like oh this is Akira Toriyama this is I didn't even know really a whole lot about anime at that point in my life either so um so like this was really my first foray into all that i i wasn't that learned in any of that either so i i did like and watch a ton of anime in high school as well but i owe you know chrono trigger a lot as the game that taught me you know akira toriyama nobuo ematsu and like all the the big guys in gaming um at the time that we're still making games obviously in different capacities but what the fuck am i making here this is weird as shit <laughs> um so yeah chrono trigger i don't talk about it very much and and you know i haven't in in the years you probably haven't seen me like shill chrono trigger very much but it is an incredibly important game to me like i was in middle school like I played games and I'd want to come home and play my games like but like Chrono Trigger was the first game like I would be thinking about it all freaking day all I want to do is go home and play Chrono Trigger <laughs> and keep keep playing that game got a little frog here he is frog um and it was just that that special that special game that really like ignited my passion for RPGs and after that I played a few other really big rpgs on snes um i would say look at this what oh man we're really getting there now this is getting tall it's like <laughs> it's big all right so now we're gonna build one on the other side then we're driving right into bag 15 but after chrono trigger you know i i wanted more and i played like a translated version of bahamut lagoon i played tales of fantasia um, I played the big one, though, that also stuck with me. There's a few. I'll probably think of them the more I keep talking. But one of them was Seiken Densetsu 3. Uh, I didn't play that till later on because the translation patch wasn't out for a bit. Star Ocean Second Story was another one that stuck with me. Um, but the psycho densetsu 3 which we now know as trials of mana because it's been like localized and remade but at the time it was just a fan translation by this guy neil corlett i think his name was and you could get this translation the neil corlett translation was known as the good one forever and that's how i played that game for the first time i didn't really like secret of mana too much but Psych and Densetsu 3 really, like, changed me. That game was just unreal good for the time. I know it shows its age now, but it's uh, it's another game that... And it's cool. Got its remake. I played the remake. I, I would say, like, I enjoyed it. Not quite as much as the original. Um, I think it did this, the series justice, and I'm thrilled that the game came out. But, um... I don't know. There's just something about the original that sticks with me more. Not that I'm a purist, because I enjoy both versions of the game. I think I just prefer my, you know, the old one. Because I think I'm just old now. But yeah, I'm surprised they haven't remade Chrono Trigger. I would assume there's a lot of, like, licensing problems because of the team that made that game. There's just so many, you know so many things they need to account for to, to bring it to life. I don't think that it's just possible to <laughs> un unravel what Chrono Trigger was. 
and you know allow it to have new life on the switch i would love a remake of chrono trigger um i think it i think a lot of people uh would love that i think chrono trigger is a very universally appreciated rpg it's one that gets talked about a lot so i would i would be okay with that if that happened um I would be excited that new gamers get to experience Chrono Trigger. Yeah, Nintendo can do whatever the hell they want, especially with that Mario movie money. <laughs> All right, we're on to bag 50. There were no spare pieces in that bag, by the way. We're really getting there now. This is like you can't you can start you're starting to see the pieces on the top camera <laughs> that that are like cuz it's like it's built up like it's tall. It's really the best way I can say it right now. You're right, they did manage it with Banjo and 007. But I feel like their their relationship with Rare is getting better now. It was bad for a long time. But it seems like things are better. Okay, so this bag has all this going on in it. So I was worried about this when I saw it yesterday. It just looks like we're going to be doing a lot of repetition in small piece. But otherwise, the bag looks okay. Especially if we're dealing with symmetry at this point, whatever we're doing to one side, we're doing to the other side. So it's just like, there's probably two of everything going on here. Two of m most things. Oh man, what? I just bumped this and it moves. Oh, I did something. Oh shoot. Hold on. I gotta get in here. Um... Oh, man. <sighs> okay. Fixed it. We fixed it. Whew. That is a lot of small pieces. So this is going to be a bag. I can already tell. 16 is even more stuff. Build run and start over. God, no. I'm not, I'm not even going to pour that out yet. I'm just going to keep it. Until I need it. I bet I need it in the first step, though. That's too much. 15. Oh, we're building the roof. That's why. It's all the shingles on the roof. Okay. Interesting. I love how... This is a small detail, but... I love how the, the in the bag shakeout animation, they actually have the pieces in there. It's different for each bag. It's not just like a general open bag 15. They actually design the the thing to look that way all right so i do i think that's step one i need what's in here no do i i don't wait do i where are those i think they are in here all right well it was bound to happen sooner or later so let's just do it Ooh. empty let me just move this down a little more I did nothing there we go oh, yep they were in there okay Oh man, and step two's got these. Oh, okay. Well, let's just when you sin, you might as well go all the way. <laughs> That's where we're at. Uh, another game. So yeah, I do. I talked about it in in the channel the other day, but I would love to play the ROM hack Chrono Trigger Plus adds a ton of content to the base chrono trigger and just rock that rom hack end to end because i do love that game and it you don't gotta convince me too hard to play it that's for sure but i know what i know what playing a uh jrpg would do to j-man <laughs> 
but we don't hack and just play video games <laughs> legit. Well, playing the original would be cool and all, but you could play the ROM hack and actually experience something new in a game that is old. So it scratches the itch to play the original game, but it gives you a new challenge, a new, a new experience for a veteran player. And that's kind of why I like ROM hacks in general. Okay, I'm looking for a one by two small piece here. Unless I use one of these, which I don't think. Yeah? Can you come get Max? Come get Max? Why? He's sleeping on Mom. Are we sleeping on Mom? Uh, give me a minute. I gotta go do Dad stuff. While I look for this piece. Oh, I just want to finish this step. Where are you? Yeah, that's definitely what I need. Yeah, we gotta save Red Plaid Mom. Yeah, Resident Evil 4. I might watch Chrono Trigger. It's a great game. It just... I don't know how to explain it. Like, they just... Of all the old RPGs, like, there's good ones. Final Fantasy's, you know... Uh, six, for example, comes to mind as another really great old JRPG. But like, there is just a a vibe that Chrono Trigger has that it's just so radically different, and it just scales up perfectly to the danger of that the world is facing. It puts you through all these awesome like time travel scenario like it just did everything cool that a game wanted to do back back then there is no one by two i don't see it i don't see it like i'm looking at these that that are the one by twos but they have the studs in the front i need a one by two to go right here just like connected and the step does clearly show that it's a one by two right there. And there's the one with the studs in the front. And I have that one in. I need that one by two right there. And I can't find it. Uh, and I have a lot of these. Oh, I found it. There it is. There you are. All right. We got to save Rad Plaid Mom. So I'm going to be right back. And then we'll talk about more old games. Behave, chat. <laughs> I'll read that when I come back, Merc. Okay, sorry about that. That wasn't actually to put Max to bed. Um, my daughter just wanted mom to tuck her in, but mom couldn't tuck her in because Max fell asleep on her, so she wanted Max out of the picture <laughs> so she could get tucked in by mom, so dad tucked her in instead. 
dad stuff, you know. That's that's the best way to put it. So yeah, we're making the roof right now. We're gonna make it a lot of this. We're about to see a whole lot of this. Look at these, the cool little like one by one tiles, but the color is really unique. They look really cool in person. Try to the step I did. There's a black. Upside down. Like that. Yep. Okay. And then it turns around. Initial installment of when I was like eight or nine was Mystic Quest. <laughs> I've played Mystic Quest. It's a very strange and unique Final Fantasy game. <laughs> It doesn't even use like traditional HP bars in its in its default iteration. You have to. All right, I'm gonna put it like this so I can see it plainly. You can kind of see it. Um, you know, if I move it up a little, actually, I'll be putting stuff on all these gray things for the roof. And the first one goes right here, which I think. I wish it would show me. The step isn't very good to describe where this goes. I'm pretty sure it just goes like that, though. So that's what we're going to do. Cool. Now to do this a billion more times. Yep. Mystic Quest was OK. It, it, I feel like I think the, the marketing or the intention behind Mystic Quest was to create something for the American audience, <laughs> and I, I, I'm using that term literally like they were like, Americans can't handle real Final Fantasy, so let's like give them this, this dumb watered down Final Fantasy with this very, like, it was almost like a remake of the first Final Fantasy, because it had the four, like, the four crystals that you went and got, or something like that, and the, the whole point was like, you're, it's like a more very in-your-face adventure than than like this this you know narrative that you experience over time. Like they didn't think American audiences could handle that. <laughs> Coding wasn't correct, so you could use a phoenix down on the boss instead of your party. <laughs> yeah, well, that's a thing. I mean, I guess probably not in this instance, but like that's a known. Final Fantasy trope is the the undead zombie bosses can always go down with like curing magic. So if you know they're weak to curing magic, you can cast like the revive spell or the, use the revive item, the phoenix down. And if it works, it wait. Hey, there you go. That's that's big thinking there. You did yourself a big think. Wow, that looks cool actually. And the way it like continues on to make that a point. I like that. Um, Mystic Quest. I, you know, I remember playing that game, but then I remember one day I had a migraine, and <laughs> I, like I had a migraine while playing that game, and then it, like ruined the game for me. <laughs> I never played it again. I don't even know if I beat it. I think I did. I remember getting far in that game. I don't know if I ever like beat it. Beat it. You get like a companion party member. So you only have like one party member the whole game. And then you have like a, a second party member that joins you. Like a different one based on where you are in the game. And that's like the whole thing. It's like you're on an adventure yourself. Like that is a you, an adventure to you. You know, it's not like this party going, you know, killing God or something. It's just, you know, you're, you're an adventurer doing adventuring stuff. There's the cool roof piece right there. Yeah, right? Yeah, you couldn't Google shit on day one. Let me tell you what it was like playing Final Fantasy XI even with the internet. <laughs> it was not pleasant. Oh my god, what is this? Okay, so we have to... Oh, Jesus. What am I doing here? Um, okay, so they're pointing upward. And this comes to a point. That much I can I understand, but... Right here, this white piece. What am I doing with that? Unless that's part of it. Oh, 
Oh, that needs to be. Wait, what? Okay, so that I, I was right about that white piece. Okay, we need to scoot that one more back. Okay, this is gonna be painful, painful, it's still painful, still pain, not that painful. Now these should plug in beautifully, hopefully, right here. They do. Cool. Oh, shit, what? Okay. Okay. Now look at that. Starting to get the roof there. Cool. All right, next one. So, yeah, Chrono Trigger. Very smooth place in my heart. Very big place in my heart. I said smooth. That's how tired I am. Not that tired. I'm just like, I don't know, my brain is blech today. I did a... So I, part of my new content that I'm making at LEGO involves um, four e-learnings. Like, you know, web-based classes. And uh, I got the scripts back from our Tone of Voice team. And the Tone of Voice team, like, reads your scripts, edits them for, you know, Lego language, making sure you're, like, your content, you know, looks good for Lego. Wait, hold on. Turn that, turn that. Yeah, that looks right. Yes, it does. Um, I got the scripts back today, so I had to uh, edit all four of the e-learn courses with all the script edits, which was daunting. And I just, I don't know. You go through four, four full scripts for e-learns, and I just, like, got my brain fried from that. I did a lot of other stuff too, but that one in particular I felt winded after. Oh, I need another one. Oh, that one was easier to find. Thank goodness. Even playing Final Fantasy XI though with internet, that game was still a huge heartache <laughs> to play. You'd miss one step in the guide and you'd have to like backtrack for an like two hours just to get to this other quest marker there was no fast travel like or there was but it was very limited and only white mages could do it so you'd either have to have, bring be a white mage or pay a white mage to teleport you there and ugh, final fantasy 11 was nuts i don't know why i played it for as long as i did i loved it let's just call it what it is i shamelessly adored it for many years I did not sleep in late today. It's actually up before my alarm. My wife woke me up and she was like, Max isn't feeling good. And yeah, he has a he has a gnarly ear infection. And yeah, I hung out with him today. That's again, if you missed that spiel earlier, that's why that Mario pillow's back there. Because he hung out with me and laid on his Mario pillow. Yeah, 13, I'd like to go back and give it another shake. I think what bugged me about 13 is the, I played it, and I played X2, but I, or 13 too. I didn't play Lightning Returns, Sats has, and he swears up and down by it. He loves it. Um, but 13 got a lot of flack at launch because it's very linear, but so was 10, but people don't really dog 10 for that. But it was very linear, and on top of that, it, uh, you don't, the, what bugged me, the linearity didn't bug me too much. Two things bugged me about 13. One, in order to experience the plot of the game, on top of, like, the cutscenes, you had to actually read this, like, in-game codex that had like additional context of the cutscenes, so it was just annoying that they couldn't create a narrative that could just be experienced. Like you had to, there was required reading in the game, and it, it, otherwise cutscenes, like some of the meaning of the cutscenes, was just lost to you, which I thought was pretty annoying. It's like they had a story to tell that was bigger than the design, of, you know, that then then their budget of time allowed or their design team could handle 
And I think that's what uh, 13 is touted as a game. I don't want to say touted. You know, it's remembered as a game that struggled developmentally because teams weren't talking to each other enough. Like they, they were, it was a lot of independent teams trying to cobble their own stuff into it. And that's why at times it seems so disjointed because, you know, teams weren't really talking to each other enough. Um, and you can see that. Like, the sound design's incredible. The graphics are incredible. You know, the story itself really is a pretty good, but it's just that you don't really you don't really know it when you're, when you're going through it. Like, it's just not explained enough to you through the game. Um... But, but yeah, the, the, that was one thing, was the required reading to just, like, be able to play the game. I thought that was super annoying. The other thing that annoyed me was you don't get, you know, it's a three, it's a game, it's a Final Fantasy, and you can have three-person parties in the game. I didn't even mind the combat system. I thought the combat system was pretty cool. Like, people are like, oh, it plays itself. But, like, I mean, there's still a lot you're doing. You're, like, actively switching the party gambits and stuff. Um, all the time and like you're you're still like as a player you're still doing a lot of strategizing in that game and I liked that I didn't mind the combat system at all um, a lot of people gripe about it though I'm not one of those people but gripe to me though is they tell the story like through the what is it the eight main characters and they're all split up for a majority of the game like not even like oh a part of the game like a majority of the game they're split up and you never get to experience a full three-person party until way late in the game. And it's like, man, I, you, you get to experience it, you see it in action, and you're like, damn, I'm just doing this now? <laughs> like, why, why did it take the game this long to give me an awesome three-person party? I'm missing a... Oh, there it is. Okay. Um, so it's just feel you feel like the game was gimping you for a really long time or just like never reaching its full potential because you didn't get to have a three person party till the end till you get like till you're off there's two planets in the game and like you're on one planet for a majority of it and then you move to the other planet for the end which is what Merck's talking about here um, you get to a basically unbeatable part and that's where the game like really opens up and you know you, you all of a sudden you're like on this other planet and everything's 80 levels above you and you're like what the fuck just happened <laughs> um and that part of the game is frustrating for a lot of people because the just the the game balance is way off it's like you you, you have these you're finally having a three-person party and you're like dang now i feel really powerful and then it shoots you onto this other planet and you're like you're literal trash compared to everything around you <laughs> And it's just like, uh, okay. So, like, the game balance, like, had some, you know, the way they kind of handled that transition and all that was just, eh. So there's all this eh stuff that happens. But again, beautiful game, incredible music, cool combat. I just think there was just some pacing in the way they handled, like, other stuff with the 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 parties and the having to read like there's just so many other things about the game that i just oh my god okay we didn't lose anything oh god i just bonked something off the <laughs> that went to hell very fast but we're okay we're okay See, like Final Fantasy X was a super linear Final Fantasy, and it wasn't a slog. Like it didn't require extra reading because they they were really good at telling the story through the game. Like and and they you would you wouldn't be wondering what the fuck was happening because you would just you know the game would explain it to you. There'd be cutscenes with voiceover and like there would be clear explanations as to why you know, this thing was happening in the game. So you never really, like, felt lost. You just felt like, oh, okay, cool. That's that's that thing, you know? Like, okay, okay, so this goes here. Yeah, I'm make sure this lines up. Hold on. Okay, that's it. That's how it looks. Look at that roof. That's super neat. 
I love it. Already. Oh my god, look at this detail. Holy shit. Oh man, this set is so incredible. I don't even know what to say. Okay, well, anyway. <laughs> We're making four of these things, so I gotta do this four times. Every step. I've played all the Final Fantasies, though. You can literally pull a number out of your ass, and I'll tell you everything I know about it. <laughs> My clear opinions on them. Don't say 15, actually. I've not played 15. I'm actually... Not that I boycott 15, but... It pisses me off that Square Enix abandoned... I, I told myself I would play 15 once the complete edition came out. Because it had a whole DLC cycle. It had the, the pre-movie, the anime, and everything. I was like, you know, I'll just wait till it's a complete game. And then I'll, like, play the whole thing at once. Like, I, that's all I wanted to do. I didn't want to, like... Because I heard people say, like, the game doesn't feel finished in its current state. And that always bothered me. So I was like, let me just wait till there's a complete Final Fantasy 15 because there's gonna be a complete edition you know like a game of the year edition or something and I'll just wait for that and that's how I'll experience Final Fantasy 15 and they canceled like the last three DLCs they never happened so we never like players never got to experience the ending of Final Fantasy 15 it's just like they're like nope not enough of you bought it. I guess I'm to blame for the fact that Final Fantasy 15 never got finished. Because I was one of those people waiting <laughs> till the very end. And it never happened. I would have gladly purchased a complete edition. But, I, you know, I guess there wasn't enough interest. We were too smart. Okay, so we made four of these like scythe-looking things. Let's see where they're going. We're on bag 16. Nice. Okay, so they're going here. And these. I don't even know how much to curve these. I point them up slightly, it looks like. So, yeah, I'm the reason Final Fantasy 15 didn't get its final DLCs. I was being a patient gamer. Square Enix punished everyone for it. Sorry. Oops. Sorry, world. It's my fault. It's not really, but if it makes you feel better, go ahead and blame me. So yeah, now we have these things on the roof. And we're on to bag 16. We have a spare little square there. All right. Two bags to go. Now this bag, again, has just a lot going on. There's a smaller bag in there with a lot of little pieces, so. Ooh. The coolest piece in the bag just fell in my lap. Whoa! It's a little saucer. Gold saucer. Speaking of Final Fantasy VII. The remake is not far off. We're getting, well, we're getting Final Fantasy XVI later this year. Okay, there's... Oh, shit. Some, a translucent yellow piece in there. There's a clear pole in there. Um... Nothing else super cool, so it's just... Alright. Oh! A little, little frying pan in there. A little frying pan. Okay, piece bag 16. Starts with this. The blue rainbow. Blue arch. I guess a better, better term. Don't want to say rainbow. Right now, Lego got that psychopath in the Lego stores recently. If you haven't seen that article, feel free to look it up. I just indirectly told you how I felt about it. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, we're building. We're building. We're gaming. We're not gaming tonight. What am I saying? This is way more construction. This is something I would do idly. If I had pieces in front of me, just like I'm big on making symmetrical things that just look weird. This is some this is a me move right here. I'm like in a conference room farting around. And then it could have fooled me that you don't know how to read Merc. <laughs> Zippy doos. Zompa romps. I've been reading a lot of Dr. Seuss to my son, so. Zippy doos and zompa romps and squigga squaggies and. You know, Dr. Seussisms. Don't gotta, don't gotta tell you what they're all about. Alright, so we are good there. Turn the page. I like this. We're getting rid of big pieces early. Just freeze up my eyeballs. Two. One on the end. song by Currents stuck in my head. And Currents, I slept on that album. Well, they have a new EP, but their album that they released like a year or two ago. And I like listened to it once and I was like, yeah, it's okay. And then like one song came on on a shuffle and I was like, what the hell is this? And why is it so good? And it was the Currents album that I skipped out on. And it's funny, it's Reddit Metalcore actually like voted it as one of the best albums of the year in the year it came out. It's either last year or the year before, I don't remember. And I remember seeing that and always being like, ah, I'm almost okay, I guess. And now I'm like, what have I done? <laughs> I've been a fool waiting this long to experience the wonders of that album. It's the one with the two people diving off the cliff. Oh man, what are these? We got like a too tall, not quite full stack. Nearly, look at that, it's got like a little gap. It's a two, one, two, because it takes three of those plates to make one. How hype are you for summer? Okay, so I actually went to my Walmart yesterday and they were cleaned out. They still had quite a bit. Like they, they, they still have frostbite. Like not zero frostbite. There's there's just piles of it in this Walmart. I could I could get like 12, 12 packs of frostbite tomorrow if I wanted to. Um, every time I see it, I'm like, man, there's somebody in the world that really wants this frostbite that I'm looking at right now, and I don't even drink it because I don't drink. Yeah. Frostbites, there. Um, but they um, they were really cleaned out. So I was thinking that they're probably waiting for their next shipment from Pepsi. Cause that's what it, it literally looks like. That like all the Pepsi products were really tapped out. Um, so I'm thinking they're probably they probably got to get a you know a shipment soon. And that'll probably be when the summer stuff hits, hopefully soon. Pitch Black is the rare one. Yeah, they, they ran out of that real fast. <laughs> I, I'm lucky to still have my few cans left. Mm. I miss it already. <laughs> With every sip, it's one less sip left in my, in my fridge. Okay, I got a plate. Let's 
orange thing. Oh, we're doing a sticker. Oh, okay. Where are my stickers at? Where did I put them? Where did I put them? I think they're over here. I saw them earlier today. I have the other pieces of the set over here. Yep, there they are. So this is the blue one. Yeah, I really wanted Code Red Zero, as you know. That's a, of all the dew flavors I miss, I'd say Code Red is number one. Pitch Black was number two, and we got it again. I miss Live Wire as well. I liked Live Wire. <laughs> we have one sticker left. I bet this is the bag it, it gets it gets got. That's cool. And that's like a little little like banner that's floating. Interesting. I was thinking that we're going to be doing this twice, but there's definitely not enough pieces to do that. There's the white arch. There we go. So yeah, I'm thinking they're going to get replenished soon. Hopefully they get something cool. Because um, we'll be there again soon. More than likely. Oh, okay. That's cool. So we're putting this here. And then here. Oops. Um, I need another one of. Oh, there you are. Blending in with my great gross mouse pad. <laughs> I'm just like, why can't Mountain Dew just have all the flavors out? I just want. I just want all the flavors. I want to go get my Frostbite Zero and my Pitch Black Zero and my Summer Zero. And my Baja, yeah, my Baja Blast Zero. I just want to have all of it. I bet it's just like a. I get it. They're just trying to do that seasonal thing and activate, activate prey on my FOMO. <laughs> which which it works so I can't even criticize that because I do have the FOMO when I see like a do that I'm, I'm like oh, I need to buy all of this or else <laughs> this could be the uh, this could be the only time I ever see this this flavor what Regular Baja will, though. Oh, thank God. You scared me for a second. It's like, I can't get regular Baja. That would be tragic. Taco Bell have a freeze version of one of them. Okay. Good. I mean, Taco Bell is always like... I feel like Taco Bell with Baja Blast all year is like how AT&T used to have the iPhone. Like, they were exclusive to the iPhone. <laughs> it's like Taco Bell just got a grip on that those those Baja Blast rights and they're just taking it as far as it can go. And they should. <laughs> Somebody at in, at Taco Bell saw Baja Blast and they're like lock that down. Sign get them to sign on the dotted line. What are we doing here? Okay. Goes inward. So it's this way. Ooh. Best click of the night right there.
<laughs> I haven't tried that. You talked about it the other day, right? Is it the same one you were jonesing for the other day? I think I... Is that the Sobe? Oh, Brisk Sparkling Dragon Paradise Tea. I gotta try that. I probably won't do a full one, but I'll definitely, like... You know. Like, throw in, like... Tsh, swirl it, you know. Tsh, give it, like, a... Mm, yes, mm. Mm, yes. Mm, yes. I see what J-Man means on the, the complex flavor profile on the on the Sobe brisk sparkling dragon paradise tea. Mm, delicious. There's also a KFC Taco Bell combined thing near me that has that yellow dew. I don't even know what it's called. I think I shared that with you when I saw it, though. Oh, my God. Okay, so we built this whole thing, and now we're putting it down to do this whole other thing. I want to say it was like a honey? A honey Mountain Dew? Oh, yes, yeah, sweet lightning. Yep, yep, yep. That sounds like it. It was okay. It was full sugar, so I didn't like you know dive too deep. But I definitely was like, oh, I gotta, I gotta test it out. You know, I gotta give it its what for. Thought it was okay. Didn't quite have the same uh, pep or zip as the uh, other do flavors. It's it's more like it almost has like a mangoey flavor to it like I, I don't know and it, it comes out just this weird honey yellow color I don't know how to explain it like I was like there's just something I don't I don't like about the situation here um it was the okayest maybe just not a flavor profile that I'm that I'm all about okay so this goes this way and then this the pokers face that way and then this goes on here. So this moves, obviously. So this will probably point downward and go some like here. I'm anticipating. God, this thing is tall. Holy shit. That's the first instinct I have looking at this. Is it's just so damn tall. Oh, we're still going on it. Yeah, good gravy. Okay. Okay, so we need the inviso poles. Oh man, we're building a contraption here. Hold on. This goes into the inviso pole. Okay, we can do that. That's a thing. A Lego shelf in the back. Yeah, probably back here. There's also a lot of room above my desk. I'll show you at the end of stream. Um, it might go above me, which sucks because I wouldn't be on camera a lot of the time. But, uh,. There's also a lot of room above the couch. We're, we're going to figure that out. That's one of the uh, top priorities of this new office space is to figure out how to do shelves in here. Because I've obviously got all the Super Mario stuff too. But this might actually move into my son's room. Because they are kind of... We, the intent was that he would have them. Um, and you know, display them and have them be the kind of the centerpiece of his room. He's got a lot of Pokemon stuff in his room already. Um, and I'd love to be able to like keep building Lego Super Mario stuff and kind of having it just all over his room. Um, he's still a little rough with Lego. So hopefully, you know, it doesn't turn into just a bloodbath of bricks. A brick bath. <laughs> I guess that's the term we'll use. Um, but it's, I'd love that for him. So I'm hoping that that becomes the plan. I do want to display Galaxy Explorer though. Bowser, um, Bowser will stay with me just because he's so big. And, you know, obviously this, this thing is massive though. This is easily the biggest set I have, <laughs> bar none. Bowser's big, but this is, this is nutty how big this thing is.
Okay, so then with these, oh man, we're still, okay, so. Right here, okay, okay, I got it, I got it. All right, I see it, I see it. There's like a little, little one, one plate gap here that this fits perfectly into. I'll try these point inward-ish. Okay, oh, well, they're a little off, but. Does he got it? <laughs> so far, is a question mark. So far, it's it's working. Okay. Oh, and then there's more clouds. Okay. There they are. Putting these on. How are we doing this? Oh, we're pointing the fat part outward. Okay. Just like my dad bod. Perfect. I could work with that. All right. So that's how it. That's how it kind of looks. It's got that neat top lot going on here. There are a lot of pages left. I'm still a little worried. All right, I'm gonna do this two times. How? Oh, we're about to clomp, clomp this big ass thing. Look at how much is going. You can't even see the bottom in the instruction manual. All right, we need this. I guess it's going on this, the, the Among Us piece. What's going on? And the green. And a, another blade. Best way I can describe what that is. Okay, we're doing this 2x. Among Us piece. Hydrate, please. I don't even have water. It's just the dew. It's actually a bad idea this late. I'll probably have to throw that back in the fridge. Move to water. Otherwise, I'll be up all night. I've been very much appreciating my bedtime lately, though. I think I'm, get, I think I'm just getting old. I'm old, boss. I'm tired, boss. These are going in a really cool spot. There's one that one stud right there. So this is going. And these just go, they just stay kinda. We can bend them as much as we want, but Okay. okay. Now it's a it's a pitch black. Uh, pitch black zero one of the rare one of the rare ones all right so this is going right where i thought it would <laughs> look at this it's almost hitting the camera <laughs> this thing is so damn tall listen i don't have very many left okay i'm savoring them as best i can is the 2x situation here. I love, oops, love pitch black zero. I love all the do zeros though. I can't say like of them, oddly enough, major melon's probably my least favorite zero. My least favorite do flavor. Uh, voodoo isn't, what didn't leave me, like I still have two and I don't have a huge desire to Oh, for fuck's sake, this goes in the back? Jesus Christ. Oh my god, okay. Here we go. Jeez, for fuck's sake, where do I put this thing? <laughs> the best angle I can give you right now. <laughs> yeah, I, it's not that it's sweet, it's just, I don't know, this doesn't, just doesn't, uh, uh, just, 
I, I need to, you know, I think it's best enjoyed. Wait a fucking minute. Ah, okay. Sorry, hope that got real for a sec. That was in, not in the right spot. We were off by one. Um, I think Major Melon's actually best enjoyed. Yeah, on ice in a glass jar. You hit the nail. You knew exactly where I was going. Like I don't want it out of the can. Like I want to like pour it over ice. Be outside on a summer day, like, and I find it's funny because it's literally like watermelon, dude. It's supposed to be like that's kind of the intention of major melon, but I, I like it's not a yeah, we fancy you get one of those glass tumbler jars or whatever and you pour some ice in it. We're about to do some crazy thing where the, there's a hole right here, you can see oh, my finger, and this is about to get some sort of like gong, I think that's what it looks like. Dun, 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 dun. Get the other clear piece. Oh wait! Whoa! 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 Buckaroo! Yeah, we gotta be fancy with our major melon. I don't even think I have any left in my fridge right now, and I didn't like. I haven't gone out of my way to pick it up, which means tomorrow they're gonna be like, "Do discontinues major melon?" I'm like, "Fuck." I didn't get any. And then I'll be like, it was the best flavor. <laughs> I miss it so much. But you were just talking shit on Major Melon last week. I'll be like, but now it's God. I didn't want to kill it. I just, I just had valid criticism. Like, look at this thing. We just made some sort of like golden shower situation here. I don't even, I don't even want to go there. What? No fucking way. Oh, I did miss a step here. Okay. I was like, look at all these pieces I have left over. What the hell you mean I'm done? Yeah, whiteout was good too. I'd like a whiteout zero. But live wire. Live wire zero. That'd be my next uh, strong desired flavor to turn into a zero. Live wire. Kind of worried that these two didn't find a home. The having a spare grabby, like I understand, is understandable. But oh, okay. Um. Yeah, these not having a home kind of scares me, just a wee bit. Back up. Hmm. No. I remember using them in that step. Oh, I didn't. Did I? Did not use them in this step. This is where they go. Okay. Good to know. We found them. Okay. There we go. That I can I can live with having a spare one of those. We wouldn't really. Okay. Shit. Okay. This has like this wild. I'll try to pick it up show you on the front cam there's the gong in the middle there you can see just how fucking big this thing is good god and this is it the final bag of heavenly realms bag 17 we've made it this close Do they have regular live wire in your area? I don't see it. 
I don't see it on the regular. I used to, years ago. This is, oh, there's a minifig in this bag. It's the last Monkey King. Monkey King. Monkey King. Alright, let's build him. He gets another cape. Oh, and he gets a little standy thing. What is going on here? Okay. So, here are the pieces. We got a big, big satellite. Two big satellites. This bag has a lot of, um... The best way to put it. There's, there's some articulation going on in this bag. There's, I'm going to be doing some of that because you can see these Technic pieces here. I can't believe we're about to finish this build. This one was a hefty, hefty, chunky build. Okay. Here's his tail. Does it go upwards or it goes downwards? Okay. And then, sorry, you can't see. Move up a little. This is minifig self. All right, so we have the. Oops. Oops. Okay. This monkey king doesn't get any. Any cape. She just gets this little skirt. I don't even know if he's supposed to get the skirt. I don't remember where it's supposed to go, but it's on Monkey King right now. And that goes there. Oop. Okay. And then the pauldrons. My dude's got pauldrons. And then his head. Our options are snarky smile or angry. He's gonna be angry. Make him angry. He's angry in the instruction manual, so. Alright, then he gets a little thing in his hair. Boop! <laughs> it's a little monkey. Monkey. It's not even fully built. Hold on. So this whole this he's got a whole flag thing. This is where the last sticker is. Like this is this is a whole situation. So let's uh, let's get this done. Gray thing, yellow plate goes like that. And then we get the gray. Looks like a gray. Yeah, whatever this thing is. Gray pole, and it goes like this. Okay. And then there's, what the hell is that? Look at this, like a barbell kind of thing goes on it. Oop, don't want to mess up my roof. And then a clear piece goes on the bottom of that. There's a lot of these in this bag. And then the sticker. So this is it, the final sticker. It's in the final bag. Perfect. The Crimson Rain method approved. Yeah, it came out really well. And he holds it. Damn, this minifig got a... Oh, he gets his extendo pole, too? Holy shit. Look at these. They're like gold. They're not even like dull. They're, they're very chrome. That chrome, shiny chrome finish. He gets his extendy pole. I'm so excited. Yep, we gotta deal with that now. <laughs> I'm upstairs. I don't know if y'all heard that, but now, monkey. He's got his extendo pole. He's got his flag. He's got his angry face. This is probably look at the detail in the minifig itself. It's probably one of the most detailed minifigs I've ever seen. Which probably means I need to get out more and see more of Lego sets. But he's really nice. I'll just boop, put him on my desk. 
He's one I'm going to keep close. All right, stickers are done. Here we go. Okay, so we're still in the back of the fucking thing. Sorry that you can't really see what's going on here, but I can maybe like tilt this down a little more. You can see. So there it is. Huge. Um, okay, so we're using these already. Are these the clear see-through ones or are these gray? Or just other gray, okay. So we're doing, God, I can't even like this. And then this, bazooka. And they get clipped on back here, which you can't see right now, apologies. Between. What? What am I doing? These are just getting clipped onto the back. I wish I could show you a little better. I'll show you when it's done. Strange. I don't know why. I, I don't. Okay. Oh God! Now we're turning it around. Ooh. You can see in the back the clear thing. Oh, I can. Yeah, you can see it like right. With those arches right at the bottom, you can see the clear saucers, whatever you want to call them. Whatever tickles your fancy. Okay, so yellow. We have these yellow things up front here. And these Technics. Oh, no, the white ones. Hold on. These are the gray ones. We need the white one. And we're putting these bulls the, st the studs with the bulls at the end oh good he's got the bulls alright these are just going in I'm scared of what I did there just now no okay The inner one. Yep. Yep. Okay, we're getting the gray. Okay, stud, white stud, white stud, gray thing, white thing. And that's how you do it. Okay, white thing. That's what I meant. Tomorrow I'm doing an eight hour training. It's literally my whole day. <laughs> Nine to five. So that's fun. Okay, so this is the inner one. White thing goes inside. I would. Okay, now we're doing these black. I don't even. See, I've never even seen these black rod things with this. Dude, what the hell on the end here? They've got like a a black line through the stud area. I don't even know how to describe it. Whatever. All right. So the oh, they go on these black nubs. Oh, and there's the nubs. Oh, God. Okay. The end of the builds always blow your mind when they bring everything together in crazy ways. And that's what's happening here. Like, stuff I haven't touched since bag five. 
is getting attached. There's more nubs where the bridge connects right here, and they connect to that, and they can... Okay, these are going to ambulate somehow when the bridge... Oh, look at that. Holy fucking shit, that's awesome. Holy God, that's cool. Okay. Oh. Gray rods. We got more gray rods. We got gray rods for days. Okay, let me just get everything kind of up here so I can see it. So I can see it. Okay. Is this a 2Xer? Is this a 2Xer? Oh, what the f... <laughs> the next is about to get weird. Ladies and, ladies and gentlemen, this is about to get weird. <laughs> we're, we're building some sort of contraption here. Okay, so there's that. Now we do these at the end. Two X. Oh no no no, that was the two X. These these two. Okay. <laughs> Every time I see two X now, I get like, <gasps> no. Ah! I heard you. Where'd you go? Where are you? There you are. <laughs> I found you. Heard me. I'm, ta I'm talking to the Lego bricks now. That's how you know. The insanity is starting to settle in. Okay. okay. Dad, I saw you rolling. I saw you rolling. Okay, the gray one. Up here, like I said, it's about to get f funky. It already is getting strange. No idea what this is, but by the end of the next step, <laughs> step it looks real weird. Okay, so that, that, that. Like what? 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 <laughs> okay, and another gray rod. I guess goes here with another white thing. White thing. White thing. Okay, and then another rod goes here with another white thing. <laughs> I'm, I'm not, this is it. Like, this, this is literally the directions. <laughs> oh, and then a white stud goes into every single one. Okay. Cool. We've made this, this, whatever you'd like to call it. Oh man, it's c c attaching. Oh, we're about to do this again, but backwards. Oh. <laughs> okay. Anyway, um, it's just pointing to a random ass spot in here, so it's attaching to the this thing. But I've got a. Figure the fuck out where. Okay, so it's definitely staying in this direction. I wish it would just show me. Okay, but these are still very much like tilted to the side.
Is it all the way at the end? That's what I'm going with. Final answer. We'll see how wrong I am. Now it does ambulate really cool. And it does work that way. So we're just gonna, it's just gonna do that. All right, let's do it all over again. But backwards, oops. The same thing, but backwards. That's fun. Um. Hmm. Oh, there's one. Okay. I was looking for the wrong color. Okay. More of these gray circles that I lost last time, but I will not lose this time. Okay, there we go. Gray rod coming right up. White, strange white pole. funky okay and we're doing five more white studs two <laughs> Five, that almost got ugly. Okay, same thing. This gets like awkwardly placed on here, hopefully in this right spot that I'm picking right now. I guess so, because they. That's how it kind of looks in the manual, but this goes like. Oh god, what, what did I just hear? Hopefully it was something settling in and not snapping off. Ah, uh, okay. Now it makes sense. We were making the things these last two cloud pieces attach to. Okay, and that's what all these clear studs are. Okay, it it's all making sense now. I forgot about that. Here we go. Got to be real gentle here. So this is like... I mean, it's not paper thin, but it's definitely, you know, it ain't something I'm being rough with. Damn, we didn't, we touched the first two really early on, and then we didn't touch these to the, like, one of the last pages in the build. It's kind of cool how LEGO decides the order of operations. Like, nothing really stopped us from doing this earlier in the build, but they kind of, like, the decision to do this late breaks up the monotony of other steps, and it's just cool how that there's a there's definitely a process here. Okay, so this that these were numbered, and I just <laughs> ruined it. <laughs> Maybe we could process of elimination figure this out. But yeah, it's this one. It was here. They only fit one way on them, so. Could have been worse. Could have been worse. I had to rebuild half of Bowser's face, like I did that one time. Nothing like that happened here. We had little, little missteps, but no like major 
this thing won't connect to this other thing at all steps which is also nice yep we got it just plug that in there This one's a little tighter. It is working now. It just seems a bit. Oh my god. The whole thing just seems a bit to the right. I don't know why that is. It still fits though. So. Holy shit, that looks so cool. Okay. <laughs> Oh man, we're making whatever the heck all this is. Oh, we got a. This is probably a spare thing for Monkey King's head. Right, let me just do a quick sort here. So this is a X, 2x step here. So whatever we're doing, we're doing twice. This looks to be one of the final things we're doing in the build. What? Okay. Flip it over. We're sticking an arm, arm right in there. Okay, not too far though. <laughs> oh, and it goes this way. Okay. What? Oh my god, okay. So. I'm, I'm again in one of these, I don't know what the hell I'm doing right now situations. Because this these things are strange. wonder how they determine which pieces get extras. It's normally small pieces. Um, it's no, anything that's small and easily breakable. Um, or it could get missed by the processing plant. Because that's a minifigure piece. You usually see minifigure pieces like that get extras too because nothing sucks worse than missing one part of a minifig Lego's big on this you know the spirit of play and making sure that customers can always be in a position to play uh, and you know it's worth it's worth it to Lego group to uh, be liberal with certain kinds of smaller pieces so that way a you know builder isn't interrupted because there's a issue um, with their ability to build we want people to always be able to build get them back to building as fast as possible that's the priority yep well, that's how I train it anyway I mean I could be wrong I'm not wrong though. <laughs> yeah, so you won't see a lot of like big plate pieces, but you will see, you know, little pieces. Usually it's small, small, easily breakable or maybe missable through a machine kind of pieces. That's what you'll see. Replace. Yeah. Sorry. Thinking out loud here. I think I also saw a mod for Chrono Trigger that like is an orchestral soundtrack mod, and I'm wondering if I can combine that with the Chrono Trigger Plus mod and do like two mods on the on the ROM and <laughs> see what happens. I wonder how messed up it would get. 
I mean, it's worth trying. So, two. Okay, okay, I see. I see. Yeah, if you ever really get to a person that sends you an email that's not automated, you might see language that says, we want you back building as fast as possible. You know, we want to... We want Obi Wan to get his lightsaber so he can go back to saving, saving the universe or something like that. Like we, we want you. We want the person to get back to playing ASAP. That's priority one. So when you come in saying you're missing twenty stormtrooper stormtrooper minifigs on a build that only has one stormtrooper in it, you know, that goes a different direction. That's not playing. You trying to play us at that point. <laughs> People try though. They do. That's for sure. Okay, I've made two of these these. Oh, and they go What the hell? Wait, when did the heart go on it? Oh, that's the last step. Oh, I skipped a step. Okay. Heart goes right. Okay, so this is a really strange contraption. Okay, and now these just literally get sh stunked. On right here. What the hell? This thing that broke earlier. Oh, they're supposed to be like dragon heads? Oh, okay, I get it now. Alright, that's that's interesting. Okay. Are these all spares? Are we Oh my god, we're putting things together. Okay, that's it. We're we're officially done building. Now we're connecting all the pieces together. This is exciting. All right, so I'm going to move this cam over here so you can kind of get a better look from the side on what I'm up to. This cam is actually not a bad angle overall. Probably would have been better to do that all night. <laughs> Shit. All right, so here we are at the very end. You can see the direction step here. It's just like put all the stuff together. And then, ba -ba 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 it's done. It's done. Yeah, yeah, this isn't showing you all the ambulation. Okay, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. So first off, we're connecting the peach tree garden over here. All right. So these two gray ones. Go into wait what? The two gray ones are right there. Oh, and they go into the white. So I can go up there. Holy shit. By the OLED Zelda switch? Nah. Happy with my switch. 
Okay, I already connected that. And that's it. We've completed the Heavenly Realms. Monkey Kid. Heavenly Realms. Set 80039. There it is. Now let's, it's got a couple things on how it ambulates. So technically when I pull this out. Wait, when I push it in. Oh my god. Did you just see all that? What? And then these can get put back. This is not perfect. I think I got a minifig in the way again. I'll put him up here. Yeah, he was in the way. Holy shit. All right, we're going to do this. We're going to do this again. Pull it out all the way. Let's get the cam. Can I detach this? I can't really. All right, so we'll just... So here it is. The Heavenly Realms. Get the guided tour. So here's the entrance. Right here. And... Uh, to the right, you have the furnace area, which I have oh, another the, the dog got stuck on the dragon. Move the dog up here. All right, so you have the furnace right here on this side, and you've got the peach tree garden on this side. And just look at that. You can see all the detail on the inside there. And, of course, you have the main gates where we have the double stairs. We have the doors that we made today right there. I uh, got the roof piece, got the gong in the center. Now, like I said, this is a tall, this is a tall build. <laughs> um, but the cool part is when we pull this, and I'll do, I'll, I'll move it back here. Or we push it in. Sorry, we push it in. All that moves. So the set, you know, you get a little bit of a different angle in there. The clouds moved up. And the furnace again you get a bit of a different angle there um but now you get a clear view of the open door there's the uh those blue lights with the tassels right there that was a cool thing we did yesterday but yeah this is a tall build i mean i compare it to i don't even know let me find something to compare it in size to right little Lego Super Mario. He's, he's a tiny little guy in this big ass Lego build. Um, if I were to get shoot I don't even know like what to compare this to. Oh oh can I reach it? Can I reach it? Uh, okay. So here's a switch game, right? That's a Switch game right there. It's like two Switch games in height. More than two. Two plus an inch. Um, so yeah, this is tall. It takes up the whole of my desk here. Um, I'm so glad I built this. It's massive. I don't really know what to do with it now. Uh, this is why I need shelf space desperately because this build is just so crazy huge let's put move these back in let me put mario stuck in there and move him out yeah but it'll be like it'll stay this this way um put the old man like back here i guess by the doors Monkey King's everywhere. I know. You're the old man. <laughs> We've got a different old man. This is uh, the Monkey Kid old man. MK is not on here anymore. He fell off this morning, actually. I gotta put him back in the entrance. It's funny, is this build doesn't have any of the other main characters of the Monkey Kid show. Besides Monkey King and... Um, MK, 
there's like Piggy, Pigsy, there's a uh, Sandy, and there's all these other characters that aren't <laughs> in the build. Which is just funny. I need to get one of the builds that has the uh, other main characters. That was the other, the girl, Nia. I think her name is. So yeah, holy shit. This thing's incredible. I've been wowed by this build since day one, though. I mean, like, look, it's like, oh, my God. I don't even know how I'm going to move it. This is uh, interesting. I'm in a, quite a dilemma here <laughs> now that I built it. Um, I'm probably going to move it, move Galaxy Explorer, and it'll sit on the ottoman of the couch for now. Um do we get a shelf? But this obviously, I mean, we gotta find a way to. This, this thing is like two feet out, and like why it's, it's tall, which I can deal with on a shelf. But it's also like it's it's, it's long <laughs> and wide. It's everything. Um, I don't really know what to what to say here. Ten out of ten. I had a ton of fun building this. I think it's a very unique build. I love it for that reason. I'm like, come up a little. Um, yeah, I'll take some pictures of it and put it in my Discord. But yeah, this is a uh, Monkey King. And next up, oh, I think it's in my closet. Yeah, it's up there. Uh, we have the Friend Central perk, which is our April. We're finally getting into our April build. But uh, this one was. Epic. It was awesome. I'm so satisfied with it already. Um, I just got to figure out what to do with it. <laughs> That's the real question. But yeah. Uh, sir, it's almost May. Yeah, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. We had that other day where we built lots of other small Legos too. Legos. Lego sets. Um, Central Park won't be big. It'll be like a two, three streamer tops. Again, it's already been started, so we're kind of just jumping into it at a little ways in. So I don't anticipate it being a big deal. And it's also less than half the pieces of this thing. This, mo this monster of a build. Because I'm like getting possessive over it. Like, yes. Yes. It's mine. Oh, mine. There we go. You can get a better angle of it right there from the webcam. It's kind of neat. But yeah, it's 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 a big boy. I don't really have any other way to describe this thing that I've that we've got here. Um, anyway, Wednesday. It's my son's birthday. Thursday is my wife's birthday. <laughs> so luckily we've already streamed twice this week. Uh, cause we're gonna have to figure out what that means for streaming this week. I'm not sure yet. Uh, so stay tuned on that. I'll do my best to not, uh, impact stream days, but understandably, if I've gotta do a thing, I gotta do a thing. And we'll make up the days somehow. Um, yeah, but we're already at the 17th. Fortnite tomorrow. I don't know about that. I've got a meeting with my person in Singapore tomorrow from 8 30 to 9 30 so I wouldn't be able to stream even till about 10 which is already late and I'll probably want to just sleep <laughs> gonna be full disclosure um but yeah already this month I feel like we haven't missed we missed one day but I made up for it yesterday maybe so that puts us at one two three four five six seven streams for the month 8, 9, 10, 11. We have the opportunity to stream 12 times this month. So as long as I hit my 10, that's really my goal. Uh, but we want I want to prioritize finishing Oracle of Seasons um, to move on to new stuff. And we'll see what we can do from there. I think this weekend I might have a weekend stream day. This week's going to be funky. Oh, we're going to finish it before Tears of the Kingdom. Are you kidding? We're already, I mean, we already found the fifth dungeon. I feel like the next stream we'll be getting through the fourth and fifth dungeon and moving towards the sixth. This game's going faster than ages, I feel like, which is good. Tears of the Kingdom, though, yeah. We gotta prepare for that. That's gonna be a thing. 
<laughs> anyway, let's find somebody to raid. Oh my god, Trials of the Sword. Good god. Am I buying two? No, I'll probably get physical. I like to have it physical. That's my MO. Alright, let's look here. The building community. Okay, we got... Oh, Maikusan. Let's see here. I don't know what they're doing. They're doing some sort of weird thing here. Amish Ace. They're building Rivendell right now. Squirrel Girl. Okay, that that's not working. Alright, we're going to do Amish. The Walmart one with the free banner. <laughs> Just save $70. No. Nope, I'll probably be doing physical. <laughs> Listen, we can maybe talk if uh, I see some strict saving cards. I could be talked into a digital copy. Because <laughs> it's the same $70 either way. Alright, let me... Uh, This guy's like doing some sort of switch OLED breaking news. What the? F what is this guy doing? Oh, he's looking at Lego.com stuff. Okay, yeah, but I'm a chase. Got fifty six viewers right now, so our paltry few will. Uh, oh my god! What the f it can't even move it. Over here, so I gotta be able to pull out my keyboard. I got room for that. He's looking at the Black Panther. Uh -huh. Alright, anyway. Maybe Wednesday. Stay tuned on the Discord to see what's going on. I'm not sure, but either way. Thanks for coming. Uh, we are having a good time. So let's go raid Amish Ace. Amish. See you all soon.